Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and this is The Groom, and we finally got to watch Color Out of Space, which stars Nicolas Cage and some other people I don't know. <laughs> a cat named Lucifer, that's his real name in the movie. We watched the credits, and three different dogs played the dog Sam. Completely unnecessary information, but I, we really like animals. So. But that's what you're here for. That's what you're here. This is uh, obviously an H.P. Lovecraft-inspired film. There is a family living out in the farmhouse, and things seem to be going great. You know, they're all getting along, and then out of nowhere, a meteorite, or so they think, lands in their backyard. And one of the funnier parts of this is when the mayor gets the news people to come and interview uh, Nathan, the father, and they just make him look like he's actually insane. They're like, were you sober when this happened? He's like, well, I uh, enjoy some scotch now and again. I had some drink. No, I was sober. I was sober. And there's a little ticker at the bottom saying, like, UFO witness. And he's like, no! It was the, a meteorite! The the best thing is his commentary while he's watching this. And he's like, could nobody have gotten me a comb? Yeah, his hair <laughs> looks terrible. He seems to be oh, scratching his scalp a whole lot. That was amazing. So there's a strange light emitting from where the impact happened that we perceive as magenta. And things start to get really weird around the farm. The animals are acting weird. There's a lot of new uh, flora and fauna that are also kind of bizarre looking, and they all bear the same color. So we note that the youngest son, Jack, is really obsessed with the well, and it seems like everyone's kind of obsessed with the water and that it's like the, the best thing ever. Like, we have well water. It's fine, whatever. Sometimes it gets contaminated. However, not like this. So... Yeah. Yeah. I really wouldn't want our, our water to do this. No, I didn't know. So, <laughs> um, I, I don't know if there's anything else we can add. Not really. This is, it, without spoiling the movie, this it, this was a great movie. It was, it's a two hour movie. That's yeah. what the craziest thing was. We took a small break at about an hour and 23, uh, hour and 23 minutes in of like 151. Of like an hour 51 minutes and we were like oh my god this is a two-hour movie we we're like oh my god we've been watching this for an hour and a half yeah that is probably you know to roll into my my likes the the main thing i liked about this movie was it was visually captivating yeah it was a beautiful movie it was great um but aside like for me is i think it was paced very well i usually don't do good with two-hour movies but stuff kept happening and it kept you drawn into the movie and you kept trying to figure stuff out and stuff different stuff kept happening and you're trying to figure out what what everything is and that was uh it was so great i love that about the movie that it kept me in the movie it kept me involved it kept me invested i wanted to know more i kept trying to figure stuff out and i couldn't we kept seeing those reoccurring themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the triangle, the water. The water, the, the water. color, obviously. None of you, you've got to try the water. Um, what did you like about the movie? I, I really actually enjoyed all of the acting. I was really surprised. Tommy Chong is in this movie. He He's plays awesome. Ezra, who's the squatter that's kind of living on the outskirts of the farm. He's completely off the grid. He has everything powered with solar energy. He's just like that stereotypical hippie guy, but like kind of knows what's going on the entire time. That's the craziest yeah. part. It feels like he knows. He does know. He does. But he's also like reacting to it really calmly, like not how you would typically react to something. Perhaps it's the flower that he's been imbibing in that's making him so calm and receptive to everything. Mm -hmm. He has um, that cat, as we said. Its name is G-Spot, which is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of like, it seems as though he's sort of passively warning everyone. You know, and yeah. no one really takes him seriously because he's just that like hippie weird stoner. hippie stoner that's living on the edge of our property. Obviously, Nicolas Cage. Like, we just kept waiting I mean, for the moments where he would freak out. And it was always wonderful. Disappoint. Wonderful. I thought that um, <sighs> Livonia and Benny and Jack all did really good in their roles. I was really, mm. 
I'm, it's sometimes hard to have sympathy for every character in a movie, but you really did feel it. And then there's, um, what, oh, what was that kid's name? The one that comes to do all the water testing. Oh, no, I don't, I don't remember his, his name, but he's a hydrologist. Yes. He was like, I, study of water. I was really pulling for him there. You do notice that he doesn't do certain things that the other characters do. And perhaps mm -hmm. that's why his fate's different. Yeah. But. And he warns them too. He tries to warn everybody. And it's one of those things where, obviously, like, Nathan the entire time, the dad is just like, nah, no, nah, that's not happening. This isn't happening. And then when, like, horrible things happen specifically to his family, he's still completely in denial. And you wonder how much of that is just him not being able to cope with the reality of the situation or it's the color that's manipulating everything for him. Because we learn that the color can not only... Um, change matter but it can also warp time and perception which is really interesting yeah like the one the one scene just uh, doesn't spoil anything the one season where the hydrologist is with uh ezra and he's like yeah i'll come back in the morning and ezra's like yo it's already morning man yeah and then he looks outside and it's sunny and it's like but he went in there at night and they did not have a long conversation yeah. that's when you start to realize you're like oh wait a yeah. second ezra's the the drifter played by Tommy mm -hmm. Chong and you know, the, the kids looking around the cabin thing and he's like, where's G spot. And he's like, Oh, you'll see her again, but she's not going to look the same. And it's like, how do you know? He, like, how do you know? It's so weird. Yeah. So definitely the, the color seems to warp things to make it look more like what it's planet perhaps looks like, or mm -hmm. it's, uh, universe or that is what he said on like the tape he said they're they're trying to make it look like their they're trying to make our home look like their home so that that was a very interesting yeah. concept con concept what did you dislike about oh the movie? Bon bonus like here i will say that the effects were great i was surprised that i did not hate the cgi i really liked what seemed to be the practical effects i thought they did a really really good job with that mm -hmm. Um, what did I dislike? What did you dislike? I don't know. I really liked this movie a whole lot. Um, I dislike that anything bad happens to animals, obviously. That was mm -hmm. hard to watch. You felt really bad for them. But I think that the whole purpose was to get you to feel through the whole movie. I thought that, uh, I don't know. I felt like things were pretty good. I felt... Sometimes that just the parenting style that they portrayed of Nathan and Teresa was a little out there. Yeah. It was very strange. And the fact that he was, he bought alpacas to raise and he thought they were going to eat them. And she's like, dad, that's not how this works. <laughs> like, like, you don't eat alpaca. I don't even, he was milking them at one point. Like, that, is that, that something was like, that you do? That was like, I've never heard of alpaca milk. No. But okay. And it seemed like they were really put... uncomfortable. And he's like, you have to grab and milk it this way. The, the boob. And just having Nicolas Cage say boob so awkwardly was great. When he's like, he's explaining, he's like, I put a little fennel in their feet. It helps with the taste. I was like, Ew, that's got to be gamey. Uh, I don't know. What did you dislike about this movie? Um, I, uh, I feel like the ending didn't give me enough resolution. You wanted more closure. I wanted more closure. I wanted I to know that, a little yeah. more. Like it tells you, it gives you a little bit, but I wanted to know just a little bit more. You know, if they're trying to get some type of sequel out of this or whatever, then I understand them not showing all the, all the cards at the end. I feel like that's also like H.P. Lovecraft's, <laughs> Lovecraft's writing. Know, like he's not going to, he God. wouldn't have spelled everything out for you and given a complete history and a why. Why did this even happen? Sometimes uh, things just happen. Yeah. No, I don't want to know a why. I just want to know the, the resolve or the ending. I kind of want to know exactly what the color is mm -hmm. and you know so i mean and and it's not it wasn't a bad ending i just wanted a little little more info at the end but i guess it leaves it up for personal interpretation yeah no totally um so what would you rate this movie 
I think I would probably give this like a 4.5 out of 5. I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. It's really, really hard to do any adaptation of any H.P. Lovecraft other than this one. I really like this one. But like, it's really hard. Um, I think it's all, honestly, it's all subjective as, you know, you interpret things differently as you read them or as you watch them or listen to them for that matter. But I thought they did a really, really good job. And it's really nice and refreshing to have, you know, his work being brought into film like this. Well, this isn't the first Colorado Space. They tried to do a previous one, didn't mm -hmm. they? I, I had not seen that, but I really enjoyed this. But, you know, you love H.P. Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. Now for my unbiased, not, not a big H.P. Lovecraft fan opinion. I will also give it a 4.5. I have never read... Well, I can't say that I've never read. I have read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft stuff. I, outside of the Cthulhu stuff, not really a big fan. Don't really, like, read or watch a lot of stuff. Reanimator was okay. You know. Rude. <laughs> but... I really like this movie. And the thing that, the for me, one of the best parts about this movie is she's a huge H.P. Lovecraft fan. I'm a, I know who he is, I know some of his work, casual observer of a H.P. Lovecraft. But we both got a lot out of this movie. So you don't have to have seen the previous movie, read the book, know all this, know all that. You don't need to know that. This is a good movie standalone, even if you've never heard of H.P. Love, Lovecraft. I think it has very rewatchable, high rewatchable stuff, because you're going to see different stuff in the background. Now that you know what's going to happen, you can literally watch the movie over again and look in the background and find stuff. That you didn't get to see before because you were so focused on what's happening in the foreground that you miss cues in the uh, in the background. Ooh. So bonus, like because some of the scenes are shot in the dark, and you know when they're looking in the well trying to see stuff mm -hmm. or like looking into the barn with the flashlight, and I kept thinking there was something I was missing, and I kept asking him like, "Is there something there? Are they showing him. something?" And he's like, "No, not yet." Until they would actually show it and bring it to light. So it wasn't like people that have, you know, really good vision can see everything in the movie. They show you what they want you to see. And it's not like you're missing anything if you have lower vision than other people. Which, yeah. personal, personal like in there, obviously. But I was really happy about that. Yeah, that wasn't annoying at all. Every 15 minutes. What's that? What's is there that something there? there? Is there something is there, in the background? Is, what, what's what, happening? What are, what are the shape of those clouds? Yep. Just, oh, God, they're just clouds. No, there was a, there was a triangle <laughs> in the one cloud. Yeah. Um, yeah, bonus, like, for me, is the symbolism. The symbolism in this movie is, ama is amazing. It's very subtle, and then it's very obvious in some spots. Yeah, like, the window was a triangle. God, I love Her that. hair clip. Yeah, her hair, her hair clip and everything, and that's, you know. Uh, so. Oh, we watched this. Uh, I bought it on Amazon Prime Video. Thing. I thought this would be a good idea to buy because I want to watch it over and over again. Really had my fingers crossed that it was going to be enjoyable and I was going to like it, so I would not regret this as I have some purchases in the past, but very happy. Very, very happy. Would you like to name any? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, thank you. Yeah, this was... I mean, I'm glad you bought the movie, too. I would probably want to watch this again in like a couple of weeks. And watch it over again. You'll probably watch it again tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Have you seen the movie? What are your thoughts? Leave us some comments down below. What's some of your favorite writing from H.P. Lovecraft? I'd love to know that as well. Like the video if you did like the video. Or you could like the video if you... Um, like, like Cats Named Lucifer. Like Cats Named Lucifer. Or if you know a cat named G-Spot, that's disgusting. Actually, don't. Don't. know. Um, <laughs> don't need your cat. Don't name nope, your cat that. nope, nope. Don't don't name your cat that. It's nasty. I don't want to be yelling G spot and making the pss 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 because blah, blah. So, anyways, <laughs> hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. Uh, did you hear that? There's a thud outside. Off topic. <sighs> You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. You can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. 
please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter under Repeat Groom Ray, where you get notifications when I go live on Twitch. And you can follow me directly on Twitch under Repeat Ray Animator. Come watch me and my stupid friends play stupid video games. It's pure entertainment. Absolutely no substance. Stupid. Stupid. And occasionally you'll hear Rayanne in the background yell, shut the hell up, I'm trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm a sleepy lady. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm fixing my hair. I'm fixing my hair. What's that? My phone buzzed. Oh, God. Repeat groom right. Repeat.